On um, lecture 13, uh, we're going to talk about infections uh, that affect upper and lower respiratory system. Uh, the respiratory system extends from the nasal cavities to the millions of alveoli, uh, which are little sacs within lungs, and this is where gas exchange occurs. Uh, the function of respiratory system is uh, to exchange oxygen from the air for carbon dioxide produced in the tissues and the internal, internal organs. Uh, because the respiratory system is exposed to the air uh, and uh, every day we inhale a huge number of microorganisms, it gets infected more often than any other systems of human body. The respiratory system is divided into two parts. We call them upper and lower respiratory systems. The upper respiratory system begins uh, from nasal cavities and uh, this is where inhaled air gets uh, warmed up and uh, filtered. And uh, the next part of uh, upper respiratory system is a nasopharynx. It is an upper part of throat. Uh, it is connected to sinuses and uh, middle ear. Uh, also adenoids, uh, which are uh, lymphoid tissue, is located in uh, this area. And then nasopharynx continues into oropharynx, uh, which is the back of the throat. And this is where tonsils are located. The next structure that actually divides upper respiratory system from lower respiratory system is called epiglottis. Uh, epiglottis is a flap-like structure and the main function of epiglottis is to direct food uh, from the oropharynx into esophagus. Today we're going to talk about an infection uh, of epiglottis. It's called epiglottitis. And uh, usually this infection affects uh, children, young children. And then a lower respiratory system uh, begins from larynx, or we call it a voice box. Uh, we call it voice box because our voice cords are located uh, in this area. Uh, infection or inflammation of larynx is uh, called laryngitis. And uh, a very specific symptom of uh, laryngitis will be hoarseness of the voice or sometimes even loss of voice. Uh, larynx to continue uh, into trachea. It continues into trachea and trachea this is the last area where normal biota can be found and not too many organisms just few organisms. Uh, then trachea branches into right and uh, left primary bronchi and then the primary bronchi uh, uh, branch into the secondary and tertiary bronchi, which are smaller caliber bronchi, and eventually a uh, small caliber bronchi will end up with alveoli. As I said, those are little tiny sacs within our lungs, and this is where gas exchange occurs. Our lungs are covered with pleura. Uh, it is a smooth membrane and uh, you have to remember that pleura has a lot of nerve endings in its structure. And that explains why if patient uh, develop pleuritis, one of the main symptoms that uh, or complaints that uh, you will hear from that patient will be complaint on pain. A uh, patient will tell you that it hurts to breathe, to cough, and even it hurts to move. Why? Uh, because pleura has a lot of nerve endings in its structure. Unlike lungs, they have not too many nerve endings. And sometimes on a chest x-ray, we can see a huge cavity that can destroy the whole lobe of the lung. But patient usually has no complaints on pain. Why? Because lungs don't have too many nerve endings in the structure. Uh, the first infection we're going to talk about is epiglottitis. Uh, it's an infection of epiglottis and it's caused by Haemophilus influenza. Uh, Haemophilus influenza is a gram-negative bacillus. It grows on a chocolate media. 
the source of uh, haemophilus influenza in nature is uh, humans. So we can say the source of infection will be infected individual, individuals or asymptomatic carriers. Infection is transmitted by respiratory droplets and uh, you have to remember that usually this uh, infection affects uh, small children from age of uh, six to uh, from age of four to six. Why? Because most uh, adults are already seropositive to haemophilus influenza, it means adults have immunity against haemophilus influenza. The, most, the uh, main symptoms of epiglottitis will be fever, headache, muscle aches, and uh, obstruction of upper airways. For the treatment, we're going to use antibiotics, for example, cephalosporins uh, might be drug of, uh, drugs of choice, and vaccine is available. It's a part, it is a part of Hib vaccine. Uh, next, we are going to talk about uh, Streptococcus pyogenes uh, and it can cause infection of our respiratory tract. It can cause what we call Streptococcal pharyngitis or strep throat. Streptococcus pyogenes is a gram-positive uh, caucus in chains. It forms beta hemolysis on the blood agar plate. It is uh, catalase negative as uh, all uh, streptococcus species. Strep pyogenes belongs to group A of streptococcus species and therefore the full name of strep pyogenes is a beta hemolytic streptococcus pyogenes group A. The source of infection will be humans, uh, either uh, infected individuals or asymptomatic carriers. Uh, you probably remember uh, children of school age uh, might have Streptococcus pyogenes in the throat as a part of normal biota. And also the source of infection can be a contaminated, contaminated food. As an example on this slide you see unpasteurized milk. Uh, infection is transmitted by respiratory droplets or through contaminated food and the symptoms of infection will be uh, fever, chills, headache, muscle aches. The original lymph nodes will be uh, enlarged and tender. If you look at the mucous membranes of um, patient's throat, you will be able to see whitish exudate on the surface of the uh, mucous membranes of tonsils. To diagnose a strep throat, we either can go, uh, can use a rapid uh, uh, strep test or a strep A test, or we can uh, culture uh, the mucous membranes of throat of the patient and then isolate pathogen identified uh, using bicitracin or a disc because as uh, as you remember streptococcus pyogenes is bicitracin positive means sensitive. A streptococcal pharyngitis uh, can be a self-limiting infection. It means if we don't treat it, the patients will uh, recover without any problems. Uh, but uh, what we usually is afraid of is uh, complication. Uh, streptococcus pyogenes can uh, produce very strong toxins and those toxins can cause uh, very uh, severe, very serious complications. Uh, a few of those complications are listed here on this slide. For example, a scarlet fever. The main symptoms will be fever and rash. Uh, infection can go systemic and cause sepsis. Of course, it is a life-threatening condition uh, and requires uh, antibacterial treatment as soon as possible. Uh, but the most common complication that we're usually afraid of uh, is what we call rheumatic fever. A rheumatic fever is an example of type 2 hypersensitivity reaction and in this case uh, antibodies will be produced against connective tissue of that patient. Uh, the symptoms of this complication will depend on what uh, part of uh, or what kind of connective tissue uh, in what part of the uh, patient's body will be affected. For example, if antibodies uh, will be uh, produced to the connective tissue in the skin, uh, patients will develop a skin rash and it will look like ring on the surface of the skin. 
if antibodies will be produced to connective tissue of joints, remember joints are made of connective tissue, uh, then patients will develop symptoms of arthritis. Uh, once again, heart valves are made of connective tissue. If uh, antibodies uh, will be produced to uh, connective tissue of heart valves, then it will cause a heart valve damage. So how can we prevent developing, uh, developing of this complication? We simply have to treat all streptococcal infections caused by strep pyogenes with antibiotics. Uh, 10 days of antibiotic will prevent development of uh, those complications. And the last complication that is uh, listed on this uh, slide as well is a rare complication, uh, which is a good thing. It's called uh, acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Uh, as I said, so it's a good thing that it, it is a rare complication because in this case, um, this complication uh, causes severe inflammation of uh, glomeruli and of course it will lead eventually to the uh, kidney failure. Uh, next infection, bacterial infection that will affect uh, upper respiratory tract is diphtheria. Uh, diphtheria is caused by Coronibacterium diphtheria which is gram positive bacillus that forms that very specific arrangement that we call Chinese writing. Coronibacterium diphtheria grows in the media that contains a cysteine and a potassium telluride and on that media uh, Coronibacterium diphtheria forms a dark gray or black colonies. Also, please remember, Coronibacterium diphtheria can uh, produce toxin and therefore the causative agent of diphtheria is toxin. It causes uh, death, it destroys epithelial cells of uh, the throat of those patients. The source of infection will be humans, uh, either infected individual, sick individual or asymptomatic carrier. Infection is transmitted by respiratory droplets and uh, the symptoms of infection will be fever, headache, muscle aches, chills, uh, the mucous membranes of throat will be swollen and if you look at the mucous membranes on the surface uh, you, will be able to, you will be able to see what we call grayish pseudo membrane. Uh, usually that membrane is composed of uh, dead epithelial cells uh, from the throat and microorganisms. Uh, also, uh, this uh, pathogen causes severe inflammation uh, and uh, therefore swelling of the mucous membranes of the throat. Uh, regional lymphs, lymph nodes will be enlarged and tender. Uh, so all those uh, symptoms can cause uh, difficulty breathing because airways will be basically blocked. Uh, there's another form of diphtheria you have to know. Uh, it is called uh, acutaneous diphtheria. Uh, usually uh, this form affects uh, small children. If a small child has a habit uh, to suck finger and there's a lesion or break on that skin on that finger, uh, if the patient is infected in the throat, uh, then that break on the skin will be affected as well. And then a grayish pseudomembrane will be formed on the surface of that lesion on the uh, skin of the finger. For the treatment, uh, we're going to use antibiotics, for example, erythromycin. Uh, can be a drug of choice and uh, because a uh, causative agent of this infection is toxin, of course we're going to use antitoxin for treatment uh, to neutralize diphtheria toxin. Vaccine is available, it's, it is a part of DTP vaccine. And uh, uh, the last infection that uh, can in fact, uh, affect upper respiratory tract is common cold, which is a viral infection. As you see, up to 50% of cases of common cold uh, usually are caused by uh, rhinoviruses. Uh, there, are more, there are more than 100 uh, different uh, serotypes of rhinoviruses and uh, we usually have outbreak uh, in the winter or early spring. 
Uh, other viruses also can uh, cause a uh, common cold and, uh, for example, corona coronaviruses and a lot of uh, other uh, viruses that also can uh, cause common cold are not identified yet. Uh, the source of infection will be infected individual uh, because common cold viruses are very uh, fragile and usually they're not able to survive out outside of the human's body. So how is it transmitted? Uh, guys, the number one mode of transmission for common cold will be hand-to-hand -hand contact. Uh, also, uh, it is uh, can be transmitted by respiratory droplets, but as I said, uh, the number one mode of transmission for common cold will be hand-to-hand -hand contact. And that means if uh, during the uh, outbreak uh, of uh, or uh, epidemic of common cold in, uh, within the season, if you wash your hands uh, often, use hand sanitizers and avoid touching your mucous membranes of nose, mouth, eyes, there's a good chance that you can actually uh, skip that infection. Symptoms, uh, fever, headache, muscle aches, uh, runny nose, conjunctivitis, cough. Uh, it is a viral infection, that means uh, there is no uh, specific treatment. Uh, treatment um, usually is symptomatic, uh, but most of the patients actually recover uh, without any treatment, without any problems, and usually this infection lasts for about uh, 10 days up to f uh, two weeks.